Summer in Mara. Is it any good? You guys have been asking me if I like Summer in Mara. I've not been looking forward to making this video, actually. I've been putting it off a tiny bit and it's a game that I want to like, if you know what I mean. I want to like this game. I had been looking forward to this game so much, uh, incredibly much, you know, because of the way that the game is presented, the graphics and what you do in the game. I was just really excited for this title. I got it as a review code, so you know, thank you so much for the review code. I really appreciate that and I'm gonna be as fair as I possibly can to this game. Not be too harsh in my critique, I'm gonna rather explain what I think the game could have done better and I hope that they do better in the way of, I don't know, patching, adding stuff to the game. This game really has potential is what I want to say. So, you know, I'm not going to be too harsh. It is a new adventure RPG with farming and crafting elements. I gotta say, I was first very drawn to this game because of the cute and colorful graphics. And of course the farming and the gathering and the crafting. I love those types of elements in games and so does a lot of people. It is a game that is very cute and charming, but there is a but. I'm not looking forward to talking about this. It pains me to say this. The game does not live up to my expectations of the game. Not in its current state anyway. You play as this girl and you have your own island, actually, with a house and a farm. And the first hours mainly consists of collecting things and doing some quests and getting to know the controls, etc. It took me some time to get used to the controls, but I am I always say that. It's like I've never played games in my life. I always take my time with the controls. Sometimes it is difficult to know exactly what to do, so I was often stuck in the beginning. You may actually feel that way too. The game just looks super wonderful. I love the art style and the vibrant color palette they are using and you know the grass and the sky and the NPC pictures, they're really cute and it's all very happy looking and pretty. The music is nice too for the most part, except for when the music seems to suddenly just to disappear for no apparent reason. There's music and it abruptly stops up, you know. Now, you can plant trees and bushes, and that is sort of fun. I like that. That is fun. The jumps are high, and like Switch Up said in their review, yeah, Mark and I, we talk a little bit behind the scenes. I love that channel, Switch Up, guys. I'm so proud of them for reaching 100k. They work so hard anyways. He thought that jumping was a bit too, you know, too jumpy. I liked it. It is highly unrealistic to jump that high, but it was kind of fun. Because, you know, if you think about it, Mario in Mario Odyssey, that is like, if you go back to that game, it is like, it's sort of like that sort of height of jumping. The house on your island, it is menu based. I wish we could walk into the house because you actually see the interior in one of the small cutscenes in the beginning of the game. Uh, but it's just a menu. Walk up to the door and it's a menu. In this menu you can find your crafting recipes, your kitchen for cooking, etc. and an option to sleep. If you don't sleep or eat, you will collapse and return to your house. To the roof of your house, actually. So actually collapsing is a nice way of fast traveling back to your home. <laughs> The farming is simple. You till the soil and you plant your vegetables, like carrots and a variety of vegetables. You water the crops using water from a well that seems to run dry very often. And the game keeps telling me that I need a better hoe. Now, around the island, you can collect oranges, blackberries and go mining in the tunnel. Or you can also fish, which is good. The fishing in this game is good. It's satisfying. It's sort of like the Stardew Valley fishing style. 
It's good, fun. Fishing is good. There's no need to improve on the fishing. There are bugs in this game. For example, one quest told me to light a fire. I had already lit it before getting that quest, so I had to restart my game on the Switch to go and light it again for the quest to trigger to be complete. So I had to restart my game for that. There's small bugs like that. Now, the second island that you get to in this game, that is a city, sort of, a main island. This game has no quest markers. That was my first complaint while playing this game. No quest markers, I have no control over where I need to go, and the quest log is not very descriptive in what I need to do or where I need to go. So this game is actually a lot of running around not knowing what the freak to do. <laughs> that is how I experienced this game. It's simply difficult to know what to do and where to go. The interface and menus could have been better. However, I feel like the entire development team was put into graphics and, you know, a couple of dudes into the gameplay. No offense, but the graphics are so good. This game can actually fool anyone to thinking that it is a good game. No offense again, but the gameplay, it, it doesn't live up to the quality of graphics. It's like... I also found a water glitch. It happened with everyone. I heard that that glitch is there, and that is what happens every time I heard that. This game has great potential, but it could use a little more polish. Add quest markers is what I want to say to the developers behind this game. It is a Kickstarter game, and that is also very fun and nice, but they need um, some critique in order to do better, I feel like. So I would like to suggest adding some quest markers and also a map of all the islands that you visit because you only have a map over the main island, you know, the city island. And also you can't see where you are on the map. That is also a thing I wish that you guys can put in the game. If you're gonna enjoy this game in its current state, you gotta have patience. A lot of it. Now on the city island there are shops and there are a lot of items and you can pick trash and actually recycle trash in the recycle bin and do small fetch quests and you often have to go back to your main island with the boat so it's a lot of traveling back and forth and um, that gets tiring after a while. So um, Summer in Mara is a game that looks really good, but it does not live up to my expectations of the game. I'm sure some people are gonna find enjoyment in this, but I feel like it needs to be added some sort of polish and extra features for it to be a game that I can recommend. So, unfortunately, I cannot recommend Summer in Mara as it stands right now. I hope I wasn't too harsh. Just honest. So um, that was all I had to say about this title and uh, check it out if you want to. Thanks again for the review code and um, you know it. I will see you later.